Tom Brady is? I don't think so. It's my first time going to the gym. <laughs> this is your first time ever having cotton candy. I'm addicted. Imagine not having any idea who Superman is as a teenager. Well, who is Spider-Man? Ah, uh, something that I don't know. <laughs> or even worse, having your first taste of soda at the age of 21. This is my first Coke. Now, you would think that these things were only possible if you lived in a cave or under a rock all of your life, but as strange as it seems, the nine Plath children... We're the Plath family. We're 11 people in the family, mom, dad, and nine children, ranging in age from six to 21. Though they exist in the modern world, have had to live far away from it. Or better put, they've been shielded from it by their parents. They're going to push together. We've structured our lifestyle here so that we can retreat to our piece of heaven on earth. These children were raised with some of the most extreme restrictions. They know what a Coke is, but they don't know what a Coke is. Can you believe that? That is so off the wall. They would be a perfect example of what living on another planet means. Join us as we have a look at a day in the life of the strictest family in the world. <laughs> Number one, meet the Plaths. On a 55-acre farm in rural South Georgia, a seemingly ultra-Christian couple named Barry and Kim Plath decided to raise their family away from every possible influence of the wild world. They both lived normal lives before meeting, but afterwards got married in 1997 and then moved to the farm where their dramatic lifestyle began, a choice that would greatly shape their future and that of their kids. A year after being married, they welcomed their first child, Ethan, and then went on to have eight more, which includes Hosanna, Micah, Moriah, Lydia, Isaac, Amber, Cassia, and Mary. Ethan, Hosanna, Micah, Moriah, Lydia, Isaac, Amber, Cassia, and Mercy. The entire family went through a rough patch in 2008 when they lost their 17-month-old son, Joshua, to a terrible accident on the farm. Remember how sweet he was and how he blessed 17 months of our lives. According to their mother, she was trying to move their car, but didn't see the little one standing there, and so she ran over him. She stated she had the scene playing out in her head for over six months afterwards, and she almost lost it. However, she said she was able to forgive herself and get over it because of God. Number two, the laws of Plathville. In 2019, the spotlight shone on the Plath family and their extremely strict lifestyle when they were featured on the reality TV show Welcome to Plathville on TLC. Everyone who had heard of their strict house rules on the first episode of the show would think they lived in some kind of dungeon. However, the children looked like they had adopted the regulations as their normal way of life. They probably didn't know what the real world looked like. Looking around the home, it may be hard to find anything entertaining. There's no smart television hanging on the wall, no stereo, no video games, and it should give you a kind of clue into their household. There's no such thing as watching the television or listening to music. Internet, no social media, little to no sugar, appropriate clothing, no video games, and no rock music. Kim and Barry Plath believe that TV shows contain information that their children don't really need, so you can be sure that the children have never watched television, and neither do they know who Harry Potter or even Tyler Perry are. The parents go on to say that pop music has a bad influence on children, and to them the lyrics of country music are inappropriate. And so they've restricted the children to classical music, and have hired a teacher who comes to the house to teach them all forms of instruments. However, their freedom to play and sing does not give them a pass to attend any kind of musical event outside of their home. In the bid to further shield them from the influences of the outside world, their mother made sure that she schooled them at home. She stated that this would help her to not only teach the children what she deems to be fit, but they also stopped going to church and resorted to praying at home by themselves. Since again, the parents became suspicious of the church system. So it should not come as a shock that the children do not have any friends outside of the family. The nine kids only grew up and lived in each other's company. However, the parents did not stop at schooling the children at home and keeping them from having friends. They've also limited their access to the internet. There's no social media. 
and you can say that while normal teens are having fun on Twitter, the Plath children are on the farm, stuck with birds and wildlife. In fact, it's so extreme that the children have a basketball hoop on the property, but they have no idea how it works since they're not allowed to attend any sporting events or even watch them on TV. The weirdest of all is that they're not even allowed to eat whatever they like. In the Plath home, nobody is allowed to eat any form of refined sugar, no sweet spreads like jam or chocolate, no ice cream, no soda. In fact, the only sweetener that the children have ever tasted is natural honey. And so that leaves the question, what do they do for fun? The family does sometimes go to the beach, but not without some strict rules as well. While at the beach, they're not allowed to wear any kind of bikini or swimsuit because the parents thinks that it shows too much flesh. And so the children are forced to wear their full clothing when they're in the water. Number 3. A Day on the Farm Though their strict rules make them different from an average family, the Plaths live every day like a normal one. Since most of the family has to stay at home, the father of the house is usually the one to make ends meet. He leaves for his transportation planning job in the morning while the three boys begin their day on the farm, grazing the cattle. The girls, on the other hand, do basic household chores, but Lydia does most of the cooking. She gets the food ready, and when the boys are done with their duties on the farm, they have breakfast together as a family. After filling up their bellies, it's only right for them to fill their heads as well, and being homeschooled, their mother tutors them and gives them exercises to do. They have their music classes, mostly in the afternoons and evenings, and their mother got them a music tutor to add some color to their day, since they usually don't do anything fun. And sometimes she teaches the younger girls ballet. After getting everything done, they're allowed to play on the farm until their father gets home, and then dinner is served. The children do their assignments, and then they go to bed. The cycle goes on and on as though the family lives in some form of simulation, but they seem to be enjoying or rather enduring their program lives. Number 4. The Calm and the Rebels Talking of endurance, some of the older children are not so good with the strict rules and regulations. While their father called the farmland a piece of heaven on earth, Careful, push together. We've structured our lifestyle here so that we can retreat to our piece of heaven on earth. The second daughter, Mariah, believes it to be a cage that she's worked so hard to get out of. And it really does seem that way sometimes. As time has gone by, the older children have begun to rebel and break away from the family laws. It all began when Ethan got married and moved out of the house. Though they had given him strict rules for his premarital relationship, which included talking to his now wife over the phone only once every three months. They were so restricted from making any form of physical touch, their wedding was held on the farm where no soda or alcoholic beverages could be allowed. Ethan broke his chains as soon as he got married and got cut up on all the things that he had been missing out on his whole life. From watching television to going to sports to even taking soda and alcohol, he became wild with his newfound freedom and his parents had to restrict him from seeing his younger siblings so that he wouldn't be a bad influence on them. Obviously, his influence wasn't needed because not long after he left, Mariah began to stand up against all the rules in the house. She dyed her hair, put on heavy makeup, wore inappropriate clothing, and even listened to country music. Her brother Micah began to do a modeling career, and one day they took their younger siblings off the farm for ice cream and soda when their parents were away. They were then sent from the house because they would not follow the rules. This really got reality show viewers talking, and according to them, it's not reasonable to push your children out because they've refused to abide by your rules. The Plath parents really live as though they've given birth to their children just to obey the rules and not the other way around. Micah and Mariah were both able to get out of the house and move far away from the farm. They stayed together, and that was another minus two for the Plath dynasty. At that point, it looked as though the greatest fear the parents had, had happened to them. Their older children may now be lost in the world they tried so hard to protect them from. And though the younger children were still in the house, things were not the same anymore. The parents began to question their choices, trying to see what they could have done better. Number 5. Why the Rules? The unfortunate turnaround and fracture in the Plath family raises some kind of dust. Why did they ever think of raising their children away from the world? Perhaps they thought it would be possible to keep them in isolation for their whole life, but what was out there that they were really afraid of? 
Most people would not take sides with the two parents or even try to understand why they ever thought it was okay to raise their children in isolation, but perhaps having a little knowledge of their past would make their extreme choices make sense. For the mother, she was raised by a single mom who had broken out of an abusive relationship and had alcohol as her only solace. According to her, her mother was drinking around the clock and she was mostly tipsy all of the time, often coming home with some kind of noisy and naughty friends. Her mother's waywardness would open her up to an uncensored lifestyle. She did a lot of things that were not beneficial, things such as excessive clubbing and partying as a teenager. She had to begin fending for herself when she was about 14 years old. In an interview, she stated that she was only trying to give her children what she was never able to have, two sane and sober parents with a peaceful home. But her definition of sane and peaceful comes into question. Their father, Barry, also had a rough childhood. Growing up with his family in Minnesota, he was exposed to a loud lifestyle, which included alcoholism in high school. And that did not go well. It had a negative impact on his life and would explain why he thought that his children did not need the school system. It is obvious that the two were doing what they thought was best for their children, and they probably did have good motives. However, the fact can't be ruled out that they both had sparks from their childhood that grew into an uncontrollable inferno when they came together. And their children had to bear the consequences of their extremities. Number 6. Was it worth it? At the end of the day, the strict rules and regulations could not stand anymore. In fact, they had probably given the family a much harder time than had they normally lived. For example, their firstborn Ethan had a wobbly marriage that eventually collapsed five years afterwards because of issues between his wife and the family. My husband's at a bar hanging out with someone who's telling him, look, I don't respect your marriage. I don't want that kind of relationship. Ethan's mother believed that Olivia, Ethan's wife, was a bad influence on the children and gave them the nerve to go against her rules. She stated that the family was doing just fine until Olivia had come along. Then I was told that I was a bad influence on the kids, and the kids were told I was a bad influence on them. And I mean, I know that was said because they've told me that it was said to them. And they may have succeeded in putting the blame on her, but could she also be the reason their first daughter broke off from the entire family? Kim and Barry had lost touch with the second daughter, Hosanna, as she never came back to the farm to visit since moving to Ohio with her husband and was never even part of the glory that they found on the reality television show. It's safe to say that she was content with doing life in her own terms, far away from the extreme rules and regulations. The most heartbreaking of everything is how most of them would never be able to go to college since they had been homeschooled and their mother could only teach them the basic things. Micah and Mariah aired this grievance in a conversation with the parents in one of the episodes of the show when they visited the farm after having moved out. The two stated how they may never be able to do anything meaningful with their life since they didn't have the right form of certifications and training and the parents never prepared them for the real world. This would be after Mariah had tried to go to college but found that she had to walk a long road before she'd be able to attend and eventually ended up as a bartender in later episodes. Number 7. Sense or Nonsense If you've never learned what it really means to chase the wind, then this of the strictest family in the world would be the perfect specimen. The family may have seemed special at first, and their weirdness placed them under the spotlight. However, to what end was all of the drama? Of what use were the rules that could not stand as soon as the children walked out their doors? Anyone who hears about the strict family and their shenanigans would have their minds flooded with questions. The family obviously has a lot of antagonists, but they may also have a few supporters around the world. Some people think that they've done a good job of shielding their children from the corruption of things like social media and pop music, along with unnecessary friends for as long as they could. And it probably makes sense to them in a way. We all know the modern world is full of so many things that are not beneficial to children and teenagers. However, there's a lot of goods in the modern world that it offers. So, while trying to save their children from the chaff, the extremely strict parents have also hidden the wheat from them as well. For example, keeping them out of school so they wouldn't keep bad friends eventually did more damage than the bad friends probably would have and restricting them to certain foods, clothing, and music built up a rebellion that may not have sprung up had they been freed and supervised. 
To sum it all up, the parents were probably more concerned about their children keeping rules and being named the strictest parents in the world than they actually were about their children, whether they meant it that way or not. Eventually, the children built an impermeable wall around themselves, and it would be too late for the two to make things work again. The reality show on TLC would last for five seasons, and as the final moments of the last episode came to an ending, Ethan and Olivia reached a tearful conclusion about the future of their marriage, just as Kim and Barry were at the end of a long process of divorce. The family that had once been so structured on rules was now enveloped in chaos and disorder. Kim and Barry seemed to be in a state of peace with it all, though, having divided up everything from furniture to family photos after being married for over two decades. It would seem that they were more comfortable moving forward than they had been earlier on in previous seasons. And with the insights, they declared that the best thing out of their marriage was, of course, their children. By this time, Kim had been dating a man by the name of Ken Palmer. She had met his children and was actually considering an offer to even move in.